Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Um, this is, um, we're gonna, I'm sure we'll finish this today. I think we will. Um, hallelujah. But we're going to talk about keeping the word. Look at Psalm 119, verse 17. Psalm 119, verse 17. We don't have to go down there until Jane that we're done, but she can hear us. Let's <laughs> <clears throat> uh, the psalmist here. You do know that the 119th Psalm is the Psalm of the Word. Uh, every verse makes a reference to the to scripture in some form or fashion. Okay, statutes, precepts, law, word. Um, and so verse 17 says, Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Deal bountifully with thy servant, that I may live and keep thy word. The Amplified Bible says this, Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live, and I will observe your word, hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying it. Hearing, receiving, <coughs> loving, and obeying it. So the Amplified Bible reveals four steps in which we receive the Word. First of all, we have to hear the Word. Amen. All right? You can't, you can't act on the Word. You can't do anything with the Word until you hear the Word. Now, hearing would include reading and studying, <clears throat> reading on it, okay? So we have here Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We must position ourselves to hear the Word of God. Amen. Okay? Now, I know Oprah's, well, I don't know if she has the program anymore, uh, but, you know, the Oxygen Channel, there's all kinds of stuff. There's, there's the, the, you know, there is the uh, uh, Home and Garden Channel. you got Flip and Flop, and you got Makeovers, and you got Little Houses, and you got shows called Little People, and you got, and then you got your regular television shows. you got all kinds of stuff. Everything is vying for your time. Life is vying for your time. It's out to get your time. It's out to rob you of your time. It does not want you to, the devil doesn't want you to hear the word. Amen. Amen. All right? And, that, and that's, he gets people mad. Well, I ain't going to church anymore. All a bunch of hypocrites. All them preachers wanted your money. They're just a bunch of money grabbing dogs. I ain't going there no more. And you're cutting off your source of hearing the word. Amen. That's right. Amen. See, God gave, look over to Ephesians. Hold, hold, you, know, you can hold your place <coughs> here. Or something. Well, you don't have to say what's on 119. Uh, but go to Ephesians. Love Ephesians. It's right after Galatians. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in Ephesians chapter 4, Wherefore he saith, in verse 8, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first, into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Now, that's in a bracket. That's because it's a, it's, it's a, it is a supporting side thought, but it's not the, the main rule of what he's saying here. Okay? So he says, where he, he ascended up on high, he let captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Then Paul goes over and says, now he ascended, he descended, you know. The, but that's, a kind, that's kind of a, just a filler. So I like to take verse 8 and just jump down to verse 10. Not, not I mean, verse 11. Not leaving them out, just, just for continuity of what the thought is here. That's a side thought. So kind of like me, me talking to you going, well, you know, we're meeting over at Faith of the Church on Wednesday, same and before we tell you why we're doing it, I say, now that's at that's uh, such and such Country Club Road. Mm -hmm. That's just a side thought. It's not the main thought of what we're saying, okay? So this is what Paul does here. He gave gifts unto men, and he gave some. See, that's, see that other side thought kind of just... It's there, it's important, it's Bible, but it's it, you, to connect the thought here, we go, he gave gifts to men, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting or the maturing or growing up of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God into a perfect and mature man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we be henceforth no more children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. I, I find it interesting that even in Paul's day, there were men lying in wait to deceive. 
Yeah. yeah, we come along today, and if you say anybody's doing something like teaching things for the wrong reasons or for personal gain or whatever, oh, you're not walking in love. No, Paul, there, there are people who lie in wait to deceive. That's right. Yeah. They're emissaries of the devil. Yes. They're, they're anointed of the devil to deceive the body of Christ, to bring false doctrine into the kingdom of God, to, to offset or to get people off track from their calling and purpose in the kingdom. Okay? Mm -hmm. So Paul said that the, he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to mature the saints. Amen? <laughs> to bring us to the point where we're no longer tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Hallelujah. Are you here? Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, and so they were perfecting for the work of the ministry till we come to the unity. And then and ultimately, so we're no longer uh, deceived by deceivers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. Did you get that on camera? <laughs> All right. <laughs> we have to hear what the words. You cannot go by what you feel. Well, I just feel like da 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 da. That doesn't matter what you feel like. That's right. What does the Bible say? Some well-known person just came out yesterday. They now support gay marriage. Hmm. Music star. They now support gay marriage. Believe God does. Because what? Their pastor has started telling everybody that they he believes it. What is the pastor? What is he proving from the Word of God? Right. But because he's saying it, now everybody feels, I feel like this is it. You can't go by your feel. Amen. Your feel will get you in trouble. Yes. Hello? Your feeling like, or your, your opinion about, oh, I just think, I just, you know, they need love too. That's not the, that's not the point. Yeah, they, need, they need the love of God. Mm -hmm. They need to walk according to the Word of God. We have to hear what the Word has to say about everything. About sin, about righteousness, about fulfilling our purpose. Everything that the Bible teaches, we need to hear what the Word says on it, not what you think. Amen. Well, I'm just going to go preach. Well, you're not called. That bad. I want to. Who are you telling them they shouldn't? If they feel like they want to, they should be able to do it. You, it costs people their lives. That's right. One reason. Mm -hmm. Now, we and Branham got to, got to teach him, with, uh, they called it Brandonism. Now, now he had a gift. Now, I'm not saying this as a, um, I'm not talking about somebody, this is public. It's public, been published in books. It's been documented. And, you know, so I'm, I'm not, and he's been dead for 50 years. I'm just, I'm, I'm letting you know, all of yeah, 50 years. Um, but he had, had a tremendous healing ministry. He would, he would minister on healing and then, and then pray for the sick. But he, also, he decided he wanted to teach Bible things and start trying to teach different things in the Bible that he wasn't anointed to teach. And somebody went to him and said, you know, you're not a teacher. You don't yeah, but I want to. It cost him his life. Amen. And one minister came up, you know, and, 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 and that and said, you know, and the Lord spoke to him and said, hey, hey you're coming to go. And he said, at the forefront of the healing ministry won't, won't be here among you. He thought at the meeting. And the Lord says, no, he won't, it's not that he won't be here in this meeting. He'll be absent from the earth. He died on December 31st of that year. Now, see, you, you can't go do what you want to do. Right. Okay? All right? Well, you see, God gave gifts to some men. That means you just can't pick it up and go do it. You don't get to choose. If you call it to be an apostle, you've got, you, you got to follow God's call, but you can't just go do it. That's right. Pastor, evangelist, teacher, prophet. You just can't, you know, go out here and you prophesy one time and call you, start calling yourself a prophet. Mm -hmm. Dear Lord. Dear donkey. That's the Thank you, Nathan. He's a donkey. Donkey. All right. So what do we do? We go by what the Word says. We have to hear. In other words, in, in order to uh, keep the Word, you first have to hear it. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to know what the Word says. Mm -hmm. You can't keep what you don't know. Mm -hmm. You can't do. It's. <clears throat> um, I'm going to tell my daughter. She made chicken and pastry yesterday for the first time. Mm -hmm. hey. yep. And I'm eating that bite of bone. <laughs> so, well, that, 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 I, I'm going to tell you. It mean it was better if you yeah. did it before. It just she, you she's never it. made it before. <laughs> you see, when you boil the chicken, whole chickens with bones, you've got to strain the water before you put the deboned chicken back in and make the paste. She didn't know that. She didn't know that bones fall apart and go, and go in there. So, you know, she did, because she didn't know, she couldn't do Mm -hmm. Now what did, <laughs> Thank you, Jeff, for helping. <laughs> Take care of your husband. Don't get under the bus. <laughs> All right. So what, what did happen? I took and I told her. I, I said, "Now, Shannon, I said this is really good. I said, did you strain the water? I didn't know I was supposed to. Okay, you had to run up a strainer." <laughs> 
Now, now you got to get the, the mesh strainers to get anything that fell out uh, out of the water. I said, and then you pick out any meat and you throw that in there, but you know, you, the bones and stuff that come out. You just, now, she knows that next time she'll be able to do. Why? Because she now knows. Mm -hmm. See, you have to hear what the Word says about matters in order to do the matter. Mm -hmm. If you don't, that's why it's important where you listen. You start listening to a bunch of people who don't use Scripture. You start listening to a bunch of people who just give you their opinion. You start listening to a bunch of people who walk around saying, well, God told me. Well, if God told you, can you back it up? Because you remember, Do you remember, um, how many of you ever read the book, I Believe in Visions, by Dan Hagen? Church, you need to read the book, I Believe in Visions, by Dan Hagen. All right? <clears throat> if you went to Raymond, you have it. Okay? And your, your supply of books. But in one of his visions, um, the the Lord was remember, remember the vision you, you may have heard Dad tell the story that he was he was the Lord appeared to him and this demon came up and started going yeah kitty yak yeah kitty yak yeah kitty yak and he's thinking I can't hear a thing of the Lord saying and the demon is going yeah kitty yak yeah kitty yak yeah kitty yak and he think Lord go okay, do something about that you know, I, I can't I can't hear what you're saying you're trying to give me stuff. And finally, he got so frustrated, he said, In the name of Jesus, I command you to shut up. The demon fell down. And then he went, As a matter of fact, I command you to leave here at once in Jesus' name. The demon just got up and ran off. And, and right after that all happened, the Lord turned and looked at him. And the Lord said to him, If you hadn't done something about that, I couldn't have. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Brother Hagin went, Lord, <laughs> now I know I didn't hear you right. You said you wouldn't have. Didn't say you couldn't have. The Lord said, I said, if you hadn't done something about that, I couldn't have. Now, Lord, now, Lord, there's something wrong here. Something's not right here. Uh, you said you wouldn't. You didn't say you couldn't. He said that about three or four times. And about the last time he did it, he said the Lord's eyes got like fire and looked at him and said, I said I couldn't. Mm -hmm. Brother Hagin said, all right, well, I'm a stickler for the word, and your word says, and about the two or three witnesses let the everywhere be established, you're going to have to prove that to me out of the word with at least three scriptures. The Lord said, I'll do you one better. I'll give you four. <laughs> And he went through and gave him different scriptures that proved our authority, and the Lord can't override that. You see? <coughs> so when somebody comes up and says, Well, the Lord showed me, they gotta have scripture for it. Right. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Even in that vision where the Lord was appeared to Brother Hagan, he's getting that straight from the Lord. I mean, right I mean, most of us were going, whatever you say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. But he wanted word for it. Because even in that vision, the written word supersedes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay? And you get preachers on there and they get on television and they come up and they go, well, the Lord, I was wrong for that. So they, the Lord told me such and such. And they teach a whole teaching and they never give a scripture. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. sure. There's nothing to support it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, then, you know, and then everybody runs off, wow, so-and-so just preached such and such and said, the Lord showed them such and such. Yeah, but what's the Bible say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. See, we're to, we're, to, we're to keep the word, not somebody's revelation. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. My revelation doesn't work for you unless you get it from yeah. the Word. Amen. And then, remember Brother Hagin used to say, he said, don't you go out here and tell, tell everybody that Brother Hagin said. He said, don't you go out here and tell Brother Hagin did this. Brother Hagin taught you this. Or Brother Hagin, this, I'm doing this because Brother Hagin said such and such. He said, you go get in the Word for yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. You go find out for yourself. You spend time with the Lord yourself. You get it from the Word yourself. Then you go out and tell everybody, I got it from the Word myself. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. 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 Man, you may have first heard it from Brother Hagin, but you know, you got to get it for yourself. Yeah. So what do we do? <coughs> Number one, we hear the Word. we got to hear the Word. That's right. Number two, there's a lot of people who hear it, but they don't receive it. you got to receive it. Amen. James 1.21 But receive with meekness the engrafted Word, which is able to... <coughs> excuse me. Thank you. Which is able to save. Nice thing about these bottles of water, they are certified amoeba free. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't have to think about it to come out of the refrigerator, they come out of the water fountain. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. And we talked about this even Wednesday night, our first night over here. You know, the, to sozo your suke. Mm -hmm. The soul of man, you've got to receive the Word of God. You, I, I, just, I have said, I've, I've been preached, preached, preached decades. And I had two people sitting in the same room, sitting in the same service, mm -hmm. under the same <coughs> anointing. And one get mad and one get glad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. 
I mean, you're preaching the Word of God, one's going, Woo! The other's sitting there going, He's preaching by that name. You know, I've had people leave the church after a service because they said I was preaching at them, and another person would come to me at that same service telling how God set them free. Amen. Same service, same preacher, same Bible, same verses, same words. What happened? How they received it. That's right. Yeah. They're receiving, govern whether or not they got anything. How they receive. Remember, Jesus said, take heed how you hear. Mm -hmm. Two things he said. And he said, one place he said, take heed what you hear. Mm -hmm. That's word. Mm -hmm. Secondly, he said, in another place, take heed how you hear. Because if you don't hear with the right ears, and then he said this in one place, he said, he that has ears, well, actually the book of Revelation, remember when he appeared to the seven churches, he said, he said this, he who has ears to hear, let him hear the Spirit saith to the churches. That's right. What do you mean? He ain't talking about this. It's about the, the, the heart, the way you're receiving. Mm -hmm. We have to, uh, we, we need to be Bereans. Mm -hmm. right. Book of Acts says this, that they, they, those in Berea were more noble than those in Thessalonica. And that they receive the word of God with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily to see whether those things be so or not. They were receiving it. you got to have the right receptor on. You can't come in going, well, nah, Pastor Ed don't like that grace teaching. And so I'm not going to hear anything because I like the guy on TV. He's really good. He just says what God told him and that's all. Pastor Ed says, goes and tries to use scripture to prove he's wrong. No. I don't try to prove he's wrong. I just try to prove what the Bible says Amen. about stuff. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we, our color analysis today is provided by Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Some of y'all thinking it. And, all right. So. Better than Joe Buck. <laughs> the small room thing is, is challenges. <laughs> you hear everything. <laughs> the bigger place I, got, I don't hear it as good. So, not okay. <laughs> so we have to hear right. We have to come. Can we just turn the fan on? Well, get in say it's just to circulate air. I don't need air conditioning. I just need to circulate air. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I go high, you go low. <laughs> All right. Hey, service. Got going? All right. Now let's get some air blowing through here. Some, y'all are breathing too much. <laughs> Hold your breath for a couple minutes. It'll cool off. How are we here? So we, we need to come to, hear, to, to the Word of God. So we need to hear the Word. But we need to come to hear the Word of God with the right attitude and the right heart. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be. Pastor, I see if you can do something today. Because I watched four television preachers this week. And they are better than you. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Ain't nobody better than anybody. It's a, if it's anointed by the Holy Ghost, it's not anointed by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to get out of the star mentality of who's, yeah. who's the star. Yeah. I mean, we have spiritual fathers. I understand that. We, we receive from them. But I'm telling you, you can get something out of somebody. Um, um, well, actually, this week somebody spoke to me and said something, and, I, and they just told me to enjoy the, 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 the break. Yeah, that you was know, a word from the Lord. Yeah, you know, don't be uptight. That's right. And we, we mean better. The, you know, four services a week, trying to you know get all the bills paid, make the running money to the bank. Relax, enjoy right. the break. That's right. You're gonna keep having church. You're gonna keep doing things for God, but enjoy the, the, this this place of rest. Mm -hmm. It's really a kind of a place of rest. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, Hallelujah. That's all you're gonna leave. Then won't be a place of rest. Anyway, <laughs> you're not gonna leave. I'm just, I'm just, I got that. I, I, but I understood what they're trying to say. The Lord was speaking through them. Mm -hmm. They weren't a television preacher. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hello. You know? Well, one, of, one of my ministers that I'm, I oversee called to encourage me. Mm -hmm. All right? Of course, Doug Jones called. He used to head the whole ring of thing. But, you know, and then Larry Moss used to be our, district, our regional director in the South. Uh, he called. Hadn't talked to him in a year. I was actually, I think one day this week, I, I finally got a time. I went, I went, God, I have a break. I'm going to take a nap. Because I've been running, running, running. I mean, I get up every morning this past week and get in the car and ride all day long doing stuff for the church. You know, taking care of stuff, wrapping stuff up. You know, and 
just kind of come in night going, where did I get accomplished that? I drove all over Greensboro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Um, but, you know, God knows how to get the right person to speak to you. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be, well, Brother Copeland called you today. <laughs> a word from Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Do you know how, how unlikely that's going to be? <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. Like I said, I think I said this the other day. I said, I've seen people in Brother Hagin's healing lines get up and walk out of the line because he turned around and laid hands on Andy's hand for him to hurry to finish praying for the sick because that anointing, he had gotten tired. And he told the way, I'll never push my body beyond that place again. And he, he said, he turned around and called Andy over here and somebody else over there and laid his hands on them and said, you go do it. And people get out of the prayer line. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And you didn't come to the Lord. You came to a man. Right. That's right. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Right. And when we come to church, we're not to come to the Lord. We're to, I mean, to a man, we're to come to the Lord. Yes. Right. We're to, you, I'm telling you, the more demand you put on the anointing to minister the word, the stronger it will be. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. There are deposits in, in the gift. Remember, he gave gifts to men. He right. gave them, listen, not, he didn't give me the gift. He gave me to men. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. The gift, the, the anointing, the pastor, is given to men to minister to them. So if you'll demand that and place, place, place demand on that, it'll get stronger. So how you hear is just as important as what you hear. Because we're proven, you can hear, hear the, have the what the same and two people hear differently and one get it and one not get it. Right. Yeah. Okay? So, we're going to receive the word. That's that's how you hear. The right attitude. We'll keep our heart right. We'll keep our spirit right. Praise God. Thirdly, you got to love the word. Mm -hmm. Amen? Back over to Psalm 119. That's the big psalm. That's the great big psalm. Verse 127. The psalmist says, Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Now, I am, I, I am sad to say that in this, the, the stage of the, at least the American church, we don't as a whole love the Word anymore. Yeah, that's true. We're more interested in everything else in the world. We're more interested, they, they've even got people calling the, 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 the worship that's kind of getting out there on some, you know, worship Because hmm. yeah. it's, it's about more about entertainment than it is about truly entering in. I enjoyed this morning. Yeah, we, you know, we had a little drum box. We had two acoustic guitars. We didn't have the lights. We didn't have the... We just kind of had... Worship unplugged. Huh? Worship unplugged. Worship unplugged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we weren't plugged into anything. <laughs> I tried to get us plugged into something, but I got... got, got, got. <laughs> but except the Holy Ghost. Except the Holy Ghost. Somebody told me that it was probably better to go simple, and they were right. I called Dick, hey, we're going to get the steak hooked up at the end of the day. Pastor, maybe I have to go simple. <laughs> he said, did you know one cable can just short circuit the whole yeah. thing? Miss one cable and have the whole... Uh, okay. <laughs> I was going to have the whole bone. <laughs> okay. Very Oh, well. I always think, I'm always thinking of the other. We have to love God's Word. I mean, I mean listen. If we could get back to look, I'll be honest, I, I said this probably 10 years ago, people got mad with me. I said, people are more interested in coming to church, and, they, and the worship leader is more important to them right. than the pastor or the minister speaking yeah. the word in that service. Right. Amen. Because Amen. Right. they're more into uh, feeling good or enjoying the entertainment or having the right. smog, the light show and the smog show, I mean the fog show, the smog, anyway. <laughs> yeah. You know, the flashing lights, you know, the, the really orchestrates, and I, I'm not against any being, being excellent. But when the people begin to love that worship or whatever that is, more than they do the word, something's out of the culture. Right? That's right. That's right. The word must be what we've come to hear. That's right. Amen. Amen. We're to be worshipers at home, in our cars, or wherever. That's right. Mm -hmm. Poor Jesus didn't have a worship leader. Nope. <laughs> we don't have anywhere in the Bible that Jesus had a worship leader. No. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> huh? he didn't have a church either. Yeah, he was a man. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> Everybody's jumping in. <laughs> Gabby, what do you want to say, honey? <laughs> but my point is this. The word has to be... Listen, I, I enjoy the worship when it's worship. 
I enjoy when we enter into right. the presence of God. It, it sets an atmosphere for our work. Right. But when it becomes why we go to church, Amen. when you hear people, man, you come to our church, we got rock and worship. And? and <laughs> oh, man, it's awesome. It says, I mean, our worship leader is cool. They're, I mean, they're rad. They're this and that. And, and you're waiting. I mean, you, you leave there, and your whole experience was the worship. Right. It wasn't that you got fed the Word of God. You got given things that will establish you in, in, the, in the doctrines of, of, the, of the Word of God and the things of God and, and the doctrines of Christ and that you're growing in Him and you're becoming more like Jesus because the Word was planted in you. You received, you heard it, you received the engrafted Word and now you would love the Word. Mm -hmm. Let me say something. This is, what, this is why. And um, you know, it, it, it was an era, but it's hard to get back to, but Scripture courses were so vital in the Word of Faith movement, because we sing Scripture. Yes. I'm not against all stuff. You understand? I'm not trying. I'm not preaching at you guys. All right. I'm, what I'm saying is, we used to sit around and sing Scripture courses, especially yeah. on Wednesday nights. Mm -hmm. We were saying Scripture courses. Yeah. Yep. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave because I got the keys to the car. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And I own the one you drive, so you can <laughs> <laughs> and then you baptize in the name of the <laughs> Cats will give his kid car keys. <laughs> we don't come to church to be entertained with a musical drama performance. Right. Right. That's right. The music should be worship. It should not be entertainment. That's right. And it should set an atmosphere. The purpose is to set an atmosphere that when whoever is ministering the Word can stand up in the anointing and deliver under the anointing and the authority of the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, words from heaven that will radically change you and transform you and cause you to grow in Christ and become a different person in Christ. Glory to God. So that you grow up in Him in all things, praise God. Amen. And when you leave that service, you've received words and instructions from heaven that will put you on a course to never be the same. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That our new church model is, you know, don't offend anybody, don't make anybody upset, let's have a nice entertainment time, and let's give them a nice pep talk and let them leave. But the true ministers of God answer to the head of the church. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. And I am ordered to preach the word in season and out of season. That's right. Amen. I have no choice. That's right. Mm -hmm. That is my calling. That is my duty is to deliver the word of God That's so that true. men and women will not be the same. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so they can receive with meekness that and grant his word, mm -hmm. which will save their soul, change the way they think. Amen. Amen. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, mm -hmm. that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. That's right. Amen. Amen. I shouldn't walk up to you and go, what do you think, uh, um, what do you believe about this? And you go, well, I just feel like, forget what you feel like. Mm -hmm. well, you, um, you know, well, actually, Pastor Taylor, the Word says such and such. Mm -hmm. The Word says this. The Word says that. And because that's what the Word says, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but all your friends believe something else. I can't help what they believe. They're not, they're not based on what the Word says. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Now, this, this is, I'll just use homosexuality because it is a big thing right now. The big <coughs> mantra is love. They, they take a few isolated scriptures, don't balance with anything else, and they say, you know, but you know, we believe God wants the homosexual to be happy too. And so therefore, and it's just we should at least hate to say things against what they want to do. Yeah, but the Bible says they're going to go to hell for it. Right. Right. So do you love them by telling them what the Bible says? That's right. Opposite what the Bible says? No. Right. In the same way the Bible says, he who spares the rod hates his child. That's right. If you spare the word, you hate them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. But you, all the people around you all applaud your openness. Mm -hmm. So you feel better about you. That's what it's all about. That's right. yeah. Accepting the world's mantra is about you feeling better about you and fitting in with everybody and not receiving any criticism for yeah. taking a stand on what the yeah. Word says. Yeah. 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 The Word has, now listen, not, everything that, not everything that goes on in life has a definitive scripture that there are things that do. And folks, homosexuality does. Right. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. It's very clear in scripture. Yes. Yeah. Hello? Mm -hmm. So we've run around with somebody else's wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. You whoremonger. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
<laughs> you whoremonger. <laughs> <laughs> don't say it. No, don't tell me to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> There, there are things in the Bible that are laid out clear. The Bible says you must be born again. Don't come to me and tell me that Jesus is one of them. Well, I, I'm a pastor. I'm a Christian pastor. But you know, I believe that you can get there through Buddha. Oh. Why do you believe that? Because you hadn't read the Bible. Amen. How do you know you hadn't read the Bible? Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If you had, if you read that, you couldn't say you think you'd get there through Muhammad. Amen. You couldn't say you can get there by being a Buddhist. Mm -hmm. Or a Hindu. Hindus got 20 million gods. Anything they dream up is a god. Wow. Jesus is even one of them. And Jesus is one of them. Wow. Buddhists even they recognize Jesus as a spiritual uh, guru kind of thing. Islam, he's a and, and to Islam, he's a prophet. That's right. Mm -hmm. But Jesus did come on and say, I'm one of many. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he said, you'll have many people saying, I'm here, I'm there. He said, but I, he, he says it very clearly, I am. Mm -hmm. And then he finished, he didn't just say, I am the way, the truth, and life. He went, so, went even further. No man comes to the Father except through me. He said, narrow is the gate That's right. that leads to. Mm -hmm. Wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to get up and say, well, I believe you can get, Jesus is just one of the many ways. Then you haven't read the Bible. Amen. Right. Amen. Or, you have, or, or if you have, you have chosen not to say what it says. Because you feel like you, know, you want to be accepted by people. You want to pat you on the back and tell them how wonderful and open-minded you are. How gloriously uh, intelligent you are by being this open about things. Yeah. It's all about your accolades of your self-worth, people. There's a camera. I was looking for the camera. There's <laughs> one right there. I had to look over here. It's not about your self-worth. If you're a ministry, you are, you are obligated to, to, uh, to speak what the head of the church has said to speak. That's right. That is his word. Amen. Amen. So we need to bring people to a love for the Word. Yeah. Back to a love for the Word. Mm -hmm. It's got to be what the Word says. Yeah. It can't be your opinion. I don't care what your friends say. I don't care if they call you a hate monger, or narrow-minded. Right. Fine, you know what, call me what you want to call me. Mm -hmm. But you're really the hate monger because you're telling me I can't believe what I want to believe. That's right. Mm -hmm. you, you're telling me I can't believe what I I believe. The Scripture tells me I have to believe, not just because I want to. I'm, I'm com I am convinced that the Scripture demands me to believe this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet if I don't believe, what you, if I don't have to go with any crazy whack of thing you come up with, then I'm intolerant. Mm -hmm. And really, the intolerance is you. Amen. But that's that's how it works. You call somebody something to make them. Uh, I, I remember when, when somebody was at our church at one time, they, they, they uh, went to A&T they, they, uh, and worked at A&T for a season, and they said, listen, all we got to do, this is what he told me, this is his, out of his, own, his own words, to control any conversation is, at some point in time, look at you because hey, you're a racist. He said, now nah, I control the conversation. That's right. Mm -hmm. He said, because I said, I said, I said, he said, that's what we teach at the school. Mm -hmm. You're a racist. Now I control the conversation. Why? Because you're going to be there back trying to prove you're not. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't play that game. Because yeah. I'm not a racist. Mm -hmm. I love people. Amen. You call me a racist, I'm just going to tell you you're a liar. Yeah. And you're the racist. That's right. <laughs> pulling that card on me. Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. I am sure I am not pure 100% European in my bloodline. <laughs> we are all pretty much mutt by this point. <laughs> we all got something else in us. If some of these real racists found out something, they might go kill themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really? That's true. true. Did you know? <laughs> Pull a loose. That's right. Pull a loose Skywalker. Is <laughs> it <laughs> I did not talk about falling on my lightsaber. How did I get way over there? Make <laughs> Nate started. Oh, huh? Nate just started it. Nate just started it. He got you over. Oh. Bill, you need back up the tape so I can find where I was. <laughs> I don't even remember how it got you over. <laughs> hey, we're fair. <laughs> Point three is where you left off. 18, 18. Okay, control the conversation. Why not get to control the conversation? Uh, oh, because, because the world... One, that's it. The world uses things to control you. So you don't love because you don't hate homosexuality. You don't love because you don't think I should be able to marry my donkey. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Think I'm crazy? They're already lining up to start saying. <laughs> Mary the horse, one guy was, was having relations with his dolphin. What? Yes, for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> now they're talking about you know having, having polygamy, having multiple marriages. All this is going on because and, and the, here, here, what the world does, the world is going to do. Right. Yeah. This isn't the world. It's when it comes into the church and the ministers get into the pulpit and condone that which the Scripture says no. That's right. Right. Or don't do which the scripture says yes. And that shows our lack of love for his word. Amen. We have to love the word. Yeah. And we have to love it above being accepted by our friends. Mm-hmm. We have to love it being accepted by our co- colleagues. We have to love it beyond anything else. We have to love what the word says. Yes. And we have to say, but the word says this. Yes. Well, you can't you can't play in our backyard anymore. Okay, I'll go find a new backyard to play in. I'm staying with the word. Amen. 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 <clears throat> the Bible says, don't you know that in the last days, mm-hmm. men will be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Yeah. And if you don't love his word, you don't love him. Yeah. You cannot love God and not love his word. Amen. Amen. That's right. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Jesus said, the Word said, I and my Father are one. Mm -hmm. You cannot say, I love God and not love His Word. Mm -hmm. Because His Word is who He is. Mm -hmm. It represents, it declares, it it describes Him. Mm -hmm. God hates sin. You can't go out and just say, well, I love God, but His word, but the Bible says I can't do it. I'm going to do it anyway because I don't care because He loves me. <clears throat> you don't love Him. That's right. You have to love His Word. Amen? Amen. All right. And then uh, next, fourth of this was, you have to obey the Word. Uh-huh. Now, I know I had a big <laughs> Facebook argument a few years ago with this girl, and she got on there and said, now that I'm under grace, I don't have to, I don't have to give. I don't have to obey. I don't have to submit. I don't have to do this. She just gave a litany of things she didn't have to do. And in about three minutes, I had a scripture for every one of the things that she didn't have to do that told her she had to do it. <laughs> in the New Testament. All right, now. Yeah. yeah. You know, how about, how about the one to obey? Well, the Bible says, obey those with the rule over you. Now, now how can you get, I'm under grace. Well, the Bible, the, 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 the Bible says, obey those with the rule over you. Mm-hmm. But I'm under grace. But see, Peter wrote that. Mm-hmm. And there's even teaching that was going around that, you know, this, this don't mean to just do away with Peter and, and John. Um, and James out of the New Testament because they don't agree with Paul, the preacher of grace. Jesus too. Oh. Oh. So we got to get, get rid of Jesus too. Yeah. Don't need that. Yeah, we don't need Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to teach, they're teaching people that you don't need to read Peter, you don't need to read James, you don't need to read John because they disagree with Paul and Paul's a preacher of grace. Yes. Mm-hmm. He who adds to these words or takes away, let him be a curse of Nephi. Yes. How's that grace going to work for you on that one? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they will. Come on. <laughs> Started getting Bibles that have left First John one nine out. I mean, all kinds of stuff they were doing. You see, but the Bible says we're to obey the word. James one, verse twenty two. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving <laughs> your own selves. If you hear it and don't do it, you're deceived. Amen. Let me say this: you are self deceived. And the worst kind of deception is self-deception. Amen. Why? Because you believe you more than anybody. Mm-hmm. So when you deceive yourself to believe something that's not accurate, you have set yourself up for the worst kind of fall because you're going, you're going to it's going to be hard for you to let go of what you have deceived yourself to believe. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who beholds his natural face in a glass. Now this is a mirror. This is not referring to a mirror. He beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight away forgetteth what manner of man he was. We've all done it. Look up, look in the mirror, do something to your hair, turn around, walk away, and go, and go right back. And it's just like it was when you left, but you turn, you weren't looking anymore. And you're thinking, did I miss that spot? Mm-hmm. Have you ever done this? Locked your car, walked away. Walk back over and, <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> we'll pull out of the driveway, hit the garage door thing, and, and we'll consciously see the door go down, start out of the neighborhood and go, and drive all the way back to the house and see if the door's down. And it was down. You know? And, and you're thinking, well, you, you, we get distracted. And see, life has lots of distractions. And that's why we have to, what? Be doers of the word. We can't just go to church and hear it. Pastor Ed preached one. Woo! He preached a stem winder on Sunday. Glory to God. I felt the ointment. I mean, the hair on the back of my neck stood. Glory to God. Hallelujah! What did he say? I don't know. <laughs> but I felt good. We, we have brothers. Did you? just got to spit on. And it's like... Uh, <laughs> go away, see, my friend. We can spit cotton to the back room in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. But be, but be doers of the word, not hearers only. See, going in here... Yes, that was a very intellectual discussion on that scripture. you got to be doers of the word. You hear it, you receive it, you love it. Then you embrace it. You quite do what the Word says. You just don't sit around and go, well, you know, that's Pastor Ed's opinion. Leave. Yeah. If you're just going to sit and go, that's Pastor Ed's opinion, or any preacher's opinion, there's no need you even be in the service. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you haven't come to hear and trust that the Holy Ghost is speaking through that vessel to feed you, if you're just going to sit there and, the, and anything you don't like, go, that's their opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, you go search the Scriptures to prove it out. Right. Yeah. And my wife's probably going down there. He says, That's harsh, honey. What? Try to get your attention. Mm -hmm. When we can sit in church and just go, mm. That's his opinion. I don't like it. That one here. Brother Hagen said something about that. We were at Ramah. Brother Summerall came to preach. Mm. Preached a week. Mm. Fall of 1980. Mm. And we, you know, my year at Ramah, we had Kenneth Copeland, Lester Summerall, John Osteen. Demon Shakirian, um, Jerry Savelle, Fred Price, Brother Hagen three times, in special meetings. Huh? Now, that was my graduation. But at the school year for week long seminar, we had all these people preach. Wow. Mm -hmm. Pretty good year, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, and uh, Brother Robert, Brother Summer came in and preached a week. And I remember the, the, the following Tuesday, we had a thing called Share and Praise. For my class, most of the time it was it was New Rule Day. But anyway, <laughs> I love to tell all the grammar graduates, say, you know all those rules y'all got? <laughs> they didn't exist before we showed up. <laughs> when we left, they were all in the books. <laughs> I mean, all we ever did, instead of sharing and praising, was here's the new rule. You can't do this and you can't do that. <laughs> can, we, can we at least worship one time? No, you got a new rule. <laughs> but Brother Hagen got up and said, no. You know, <laughs> Brother Summerall said something last week I thoroughly disagreed with. He said, but ten minutes later he said something that gave me an answer to prayer about something I've been praying about for ten years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to keep your heart right. right. You let right. the Holy Ghost take. You might disagree with something. Right. But you got to keep your heart right and love the Word and let the Holy Ghost filter those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, that's right. So that you can lay hold of that. It might be the next words out of my mouth might be the very answer to what you've been praying about for, yeah. for some time. Yeah. Yeah, I disagree with what I said before and the next thing else, hey, there's the answer. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're, we're, we're men. We're, we're imperfect vessels. Right. I'm sure I said something this morning you disagree with. I don't want to know what it is because I'm straightening out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> But we have to keep our heart right. See, if we're going to be able to keep the word, we have to hear it, we have to receive it, we have to love it, mm -hmm. and we have to obey it. Mm -hmm. When we go in there and we say, that's, well, that's what the Bible says. Don't try to justify your way out of what the Bible says. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, that didn't apply to me. Why? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Lord showed, I've had people tell me, the Lord showed me that I didn't have to do that. No. <laughs> They're a special kind of spiritual stupid, ain't you? <laughs> Not just special kind of stupid, spiritual stupid. The Lord gave you a special revelation that the Bible part, the Bible, you don't have to do that Bible part. No, I don't do it. And why don't you have to do it? 
And usually it's because they don't want to do it. They got a special revelation. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I witnessed to a guy one day. We were I was working for a mobile home company. It's one of the factory guys sent in. It was a factory issue. We had to go out to us to one of the mobile homes, and they had the, the it was a factory repair guy. And then we were riding down the truck, and I'm witnessing to him. And he, he looks at me and goes, "Yeah, yeah, me and my maker have worked out a deal." Hmm. Oh. Really? <laughs> what kind of deal is that? You know, mm -hmm. you know that. He'll get right in one day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Harden not your heart is in the day of provocation. Right. Yeah. Tomorrow is not promised to you. That's right. That's right. What is life but a vapor of smoke? Mm -hmm. You know, it can be gone. It can be gone, gone in a minute. Yeah. Brother Hagin ministered to these young people. When they came to church, they kind of were cutting up about it. He went down and sat down and ministered to them. Tried to get them saved. And they said, we're not going to do anything about it. They, jumped, they finally got just jumped up right out of the back of the church. Caught in the car and took off down the road flying crazy. Ran across the railroad tracks. Got hit by a train. Got killed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm sitting right there just five minutes before with the opportunity to go to heaven and went to hell because they reject see life's but a vapor of smoke that's right. so what do we do we obey the Lord we can't just go pick and choose you don't get to choose what you like what you don't like <coughs> you don't get to say well I don't like this part of the Bible but I like this part of the Bible it doesn't work that way it's not you're, you're not afforded that amen the word of God says don't harden your heart like they did the provocation don't, don't resist me the Bible was even talked about how they erred and how Israel erred in their, in their ways and in their heart and resisted God. And we want to keep it right and get down my scripture. That's okay. Y'all enjoy this? Yes. yes. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address. P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.